short strangles covered with cash and shares is what we'll, we will be discussing in this video, ladies and gentlemen. At the 30 second mark of this video, a link will pop up right around here. That link will be to a video that will tell talk to you about the unfair advantages of selling cash secured put options on stocks you'd be happy to own. You probably saw it pop up right there. And at the one minute mark, another video is going to pop up right there. And that video will be to this YouTube playlist. This YouTube playlist will give you a, a good idea of how to begin this journey of selling cash secured put options on stocks you'd be happy to own. Because let's face it, in 2023 go, going forward, if you have an internet connection, a bank account, and you spend money at least once a year, then you have no legitimate reason not to be selling cash secured put options on stocks you'd be happy to own. Now, if you want to do a little more maintenance, if you want a little more activity, if you want to be a little more active with the strategy, then you can look at short strangles covered with cash and shares. We're going to get into that in this video. Before we get into that, I got to let you know this is not financial advice. This is for educational purposes only. The ticker symbols that we cover in this video more than likely will not be suitable for you. Now, even though this video is not about financial advice giving you specific uh, stock recommendations, this video is going to give you advice at least in two areas. First, first piece of advice. Even though these tickers and these stocks are not necessarily suitable for you, my advice to you is to learn how to figure out what is suitable for you so you do not have to trust the suspect opinion of other people, regardless if they have some sort of license or not. You know Bernie Madoff, you heard of that guy? If you haven't, do some research on him. Did you know that he had licenses? How about FTX? They had some licenses, didn't they? There's a lot of people with licenses that are still screwing people over. So my, my financial advice to you is learn how to come up with your own financial advice. Do not rely on the suspect opinion of other people that may have a conflict of interest to take your hard earned money. Like Andy Tanner said, there's some skill, there's some things that you want to outsource. Mowing your grass, maybe you pay someone to do that. Brush your teeth, eh, you could probably do that on your own. So, uh, Maybe you learn how to manage your money on your own. Speaking of learning how to manage, a second piece of advice. Hey, practice with paper trades. Paper trades, it's wonderful. Simulated account. Boom, just like this right here. Simulated trading. You can practice for, you can practice basically for free. And what I mean by free is that you won't, you won't be risking real money. Now, for some reason in, in the paper trade or the, in the stock world, uh, paper trading for some people, they, they start getting weird about that. And, and here's what I mean by weird. You know, if, if, um, uh, if the same person, you know, so you, you'll hear someone say like, oh, paper trading, that's just a waste of time. Paper trader time waster. That's just a waste of time because you're not getting the real emotion. But yet, if this person was going to compete in a competitive boxing match, what would they do? They would punch up. They would punch a bag. They would spar with partners. They would do training drills. Why are they doing that? That's not the real thing. It doesn't have the real emotion. If they if they were to take their their uh, rationale of trading in the stock market and they were would apply it to um, to boxing, then the way that they would practice for their fight is they just get in real fights. But even the 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 most professional to the most like amateur and non-professional beginner boxers, they don't do that. They all punch a bag. They all shadow box. They all do training drills. It's just commonplace and pretty much common sense. So when it comes to the stock market, take that common sense from other aspects of life and apply it to your practice in the stock market. Don't have common sense in some areas of your life and act like a stupid idiot in other areas of your life. And I get it. I get it. I, I know it's not hard to to implement good, sound logic throughout life. Hey, I, I, I'm, a, I'm a human being, too. Sometimes I, I do. I do silly things and I look back and I'm like, wow, that was that was 
I was a, I was an idiot when I did that. So I'm just trying to point it out to you. Hey, you want to be an idiot? Go ahead, be an idiot. You don't want to be an idiot? Just trying to just trying to help you out here. Whatever, whatever you do with it, you know, it's totally up to you. Let's let's get into it. In case you wanna bring your trading to another level, in case you wanna start shorting strangles. Right here, I actually have a short strangle. Right here, you know, it's it's pretty it's pretty simple, right? Short short means to sell, right? Long means to buy. So if someone says they're a short strangle, that means they sold a strangle. If they say a long strangle, that means they bought a strangle. But what is a strangle? A strangle, let's look at the, the option chain to look at this. A strangle is a a, a put. You're, you're looking at one ticker. In this case, we're looking at XLU. You're on what, whatever the underlying asset is. You have a put on one side and you have a call on the other side and... For example, here I've got I've got the sixty-five dollar uh, put, and over here I have the sixty sixty-seven fifty call. Now, if it was a straddle, it would be like a 50, 50 cent below and fifty cent above. It's a straddle, you know. Like think about you straddling a horse; it's even your legs even on each side. So this is like not not even. So short short strangle means. It's almost the same thing as a straddle, but you just, uh, you don't necessarily have to have these even puts and calls. Now, look, if that's a little bit confusing to you, I got great news for you. And you know how people say, uh, there's this cliche, worn out cliche that people will say, if it don't make sense, it don't make dollars, or if it don't make sense, it don't make money, or some sort of weird cliche like that. Well, I'll tell you what, a lot of times it's, it's, it's broke people saying that, so you let them say that. I'm, let me just be straight honest with you. In order to be proficient at the strategy, at the very beginning right now, you don't need to understand every single like technical uh, definition. And one reason why you don't need to is because you can practice with paper trades. So, so forget about if it benefits you. Forget about what strategy name this is and the definition. Forget about all that stuff because you know, knowing a bunch of definitions and names, that doesn't make you money unless you're in in some sort of like your job is to know definitions, right? When you're when you're a trader, your job isn't to know definitions. Your job is to make money. So how do you make the money? Well in this case right here, I sold I sold this and I sold this. Right. And it basically it is a strangle. So so that's it. Well, that's that's our technical uh, overview, right? Look, I, I get it. I'm not getting invited on uh, Tasty Trade, Tasty Works, Tasty Tasty, whatever they keep changing their name to. Like, I I get it. I'm not going to be invited on there to have this like smooth explanation. But you know what? My banker, my broker, they don't ever turn me away. So uh, so that that should I should tell you something that. Uh, that you just sometimes you just gotta you just gotta make the money and uh, be okay with not necessarily understanding some some definitions and, and realizing you'll figure out some of the stuff along the way. So here's here's what I like to do often. Like this this is something that uh, that I kind of do all year and um, and I do it with certain stocks. Like there's definitely stocks that I won't do this with. I don't short strangles on every stock, but there's certain stocks that. Um, only a few that I'm just constantly shorting strangles. So right here is an is an example of what happened. So at first, um, I was selling puts. Uh, how long ago was this? Right here. Uh, okay. So I got filled, bought this these hundred shares by shorting uh, a um, a cash secured put option. Right. I sold a cash secured put option, and then. One of the times I did it upon expiration date, which was uh, 5 16, 2023, I, I, I um, got assigned 100 shares. And then now that I have these 100 shares, I can sell this call. And then uh, I sell the call, but I still have money to buy more shares. So I can also sell another put. So selling the call, selling the put, even though right this this call right here is covered by these 100 shares and this this uh put right here is covered by cash right no problem that's that's pretty easy now that's that's basically it but what i will also do 
right? Now this is this one's real simple, like this. If I just leave it like this, this is super simple because I don't really have any any maintenance to do when it's set up just like this, because I got the cash in my account here to cover the purchase of this, and I got the shares here to cover the sale of this, so I don't need to do anything, right? But so that's that leads us to covered with cash and shares. Ah, but there's another hidden meeting to covered with cash. So for example, let's let's uh let's say that I want to I'm going to I'm going to be able to do some monitoring, right? Um I'm, I'm going to be able to do some management. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sell I'm going to sell another call to bring in more money. Technically, uh, since I only have 100 shares of stock then that second call that I s sell, technically, I guess by technical definition, you could say it's a naked call. However, what I'm going to do is I'm going to monitor the price of this and I'm going to buy, because I have the cash to buy another 100 shares, I'm going to buy another 100 shares, giving me a total of 200 if my naked call starts getting compromised and I'm going to adjust that naked call into a covered call, right? So does that, if that doesn't make sense, let me uh, say it again. So ho hopefully it did make sense and I'm just repeating myself to, for no good reason, but uh, in case someone needs it, right? So right now I have a hundred shares. The definition of a covered call is you, because your, uh, your obligation when you sell a call right here I've sold one call my obligation is that if called upon or under certain situations I need to deliver to whoever bought this call a hundred shares of the underlying stock at this at this price I have the hundred shares right now so technically in my account I have a covered call now I'm gonna sell another call at uh, what price? I'm, I'm not sure. We're going to look at the chart and kind of take a look at that and look at some different uh, things. But on that second call, technically, since I only have 100 shares, this one's covered. On that second call, technically it's naked. But I've got the cash to buy more shares if I need to, to convert that naked call into a covered call. So let's look at the, let's look at the chart of XLU. All right, we're looking at uh, uh, five years going from left to right, and uh, each candle is one week. So this red or green thing, that's that's one week. So in general, we see lately from about, uh, I get it, it was a little bit above here, but it's kind of trading in this somewhere in this range. Somewhere, you know, around 65-ish to about 70-ish. And I get it, it got more, it got higher up there, but uh, right here, just right to 70 you know, so maybe it's making a series of lower highs, and but it also seems to be, could you say, low, higher low? Eh, not really, right? So, anyways, it looks like it might be getting kind of pushed to the downside a bit, which uh, a lot of times if the stock market's going up, this is utility sector. A lot of times if the stock market's going up, people um, they they uh, tend to flow money into like. Um, whatever is moving and then when the stock market starts crashing a lot of times they, they tend to flow into these uh, quote-unquote defense stocks or something like that utilities are seen more as like defensive stocks so right now right now we're um, we're short uh, what is it we're short a call at 67 so maybe just by looking at this maybe you know the 70 maybe I'll sell the 70 and then Right now, the stock price is trading at 60, uh, 66.85. So, if I sell the 70, then and I and I've already sold the 67, right? So, 100 shares committed to to covering at 67.50 or whatever price that was, and then I'm I'm um I'm naked on that second call at the 70 dollar strike price. So, what I'll be doing is I'll be watching the price. And, and when the price starts moving up, if the price starts moving up closer to $70, at some point, I will buy 100 shares to turn that naked call of $70 strike price into a covered call. 
and that'll put 200 shares in my account. Now, let's say if, um, let's say if, uh, if, if, uh, let's say the stock turns around and doesn't go up to 70 and I still have 200 shares. I don't care. The next time, next time I'll write two covered calls and maybe I'll write a third naked call. It depends on how much money I have in, in here. But because this is a, a stock I'm already kind of doing the wheel strategy with, it doesn't matter if I if I have the cash to cover to to pay for the the shares. It, it doesn't matter if I get another hundred shares. I don't care. And if I if I buy them at a little you know a little higher price, like I I really I really don't care. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna split hairs over here. I'm not gonna I'm 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 gonna focus on making money and and that's it. Just focus on bringing the money in and also. Um, let's keep in mind what for me personally, when I'm doing this type of strategy, I'm not sitting in front of a computer for like several hours a day watching this stuff. I'm, I'm working my ass off. Uh, I'm working my, my, uh, high net off doing other things. So I'm just basically checking out my, my account in the morning, checking out my account after the, the market's closed and, and that's it. And in this, yes, I'll have to uh, do a little more, but, so let's look, let's look at that. Let's look at, uh, let's look at, uh, is there any premium at $70? So we'll go back over to the option chain. <clears throat> what I like to do a lot of times, especially like, you know, I'm, I'm using this XLU in this paper trading account, uh, at the moment, but this is not a stock that I normally, I normally trade. So I'm not super familiar with, um, how the premium has been lately. So I'll, I'll start at the, the lowest, uh, uh, least amount of days till expiration, right? Days to expiration right here, four days left. You know, again, if any of these terms and stuff like this, if it's kind of confusing, watch that playlist at the, I think it's a one minute mark. Watch that playlist. It'll help you out with a lot of terms. So here's the expiration date, four minute, four days uh, till then. $70 strike price right here. You see these strikes, $70 strike price. Ah, nothing, nothing at the four days, right? When I say nothing, that's what I'm looking at right here. Bid is what you sell at. Ask is what you buy at. So yeah, you could buy, but there's no, there's not enough uh, liquidity, not enough takers, not enough people interested in trading this, this, uh, this product to, to uh, have some. Um, there's no demand there, so there's nothing to sell, right? It's kind of like if you try to sell insurance on a, on maybe like a a a tricycle for three year olds, right? There's just no real demand. There's not parents really wanting to buy insurance for that so you're probably not gonna probably not gonna make any money selling that but when we go out a little more time 11 days to expiration $70 strike price ah okay there's at least one penny there uh, right now high and low shows zero because it's Sunday night at least where I'm at when I'm recording this and uh, where's our strike price okay so I don't know what uh, you know what it's been in the past but maybe you know that's kind of a it's a bit of a you know this bid ask spread one penny eight eight pennies um maybe we can get filled at four maybe i don't know it's like it's kind of running out of running out of time 11 days we got 18 days right here 70 dollars strike price Ooh, look at that no no takers over there and uh, let's also look at look at this 70 dollars strike price what's the delta Delta's at nine. So basically a nine delta gives us a rough indication that there's about that the algorithms or whatever, 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 whatever math formula is used to calculate this, that, that roughly, not exactly, but roughly, there's roughly about a 9% chance. The computers are thinking there's about a 9% chance that upon this expiration date in 18 days, that this underlying stock will be uh, at or above, um, uh, 70 bucks so we'd probably have to go lower in or or go out longer in time right maybe you if you're wondering about that what do you do when there's no premium uh look for some video on my uh actually uh oh shoot it's gonna be hard to hard to figure that out uh i'll put that i'll put a third video in here uh i'll put a third video in here uh at the, let's see, maybe like the two minute mark or so, uh, third link to a third video that will talk about, um, um, what to do when there's not enough option premium. Uh, it's goes more in detail, but, 
Uh, basically, either like go lower of a strike price or go longer out on time or do a combination of the two, <laughs> maybe get a different stock. But I'm going to put it about, about the two-minute mark because when I'm recording this right now, I, I don't see what minute I'm, minute I'm on. So it would be a pain in the butt to try to go through and figure that out. And my friends, I'm just not into pain in the butts. I'm just into like what's quick and easy for me so I can move on with my night, still hopefully delivering some value to you. So anyways, let's take a look at... Um, 25 days, 70, eh. let's try it, just for fun, let's try and see what happens, 70 days, uh, I'm really only looking at this paper, lately, I've only been looking at this paper trading account like once a week when I've been uh, creating this video, and mainly because in my real trading account, I have just been busy, so like I'm not even thinking about paper trades, I've got real trades going on that are uh, demanding attention from me. So I'll go 25 days out and maybe even, look at this, we'll do even 32. What can we get? 25, 32 is not too much longer. And it'll give us some extra wiggle room. All right, here we go. This is going to be a better one. This is this is way better. Here's some of the reasons why. Uh, maybe maybe uh, those other ones, when there was zero on the high and the low, maybe it wasn't because it was... It was, it's Saturday. Obviously, we got some information here. So it must just have been nobody is, no, nobody's buying and selling those contracts. There's no demand for them. So we see there's demand on this one at the 32 days to expiration. And it looks the highest price it sold for was 26. The lowest price it sold for was 20. And uh, we got uh, on Friday, there was uh, 24 were, were bought and sold. And then since I guess... In conception, I, f I forgot exactly how the what's the definition of open interest, but between open interest, like volume is definitely per day. Open interest is a it's longer time, and uh, between these two, it gives me a pretty good idea that okay, it's not as look at that boom. This one's got a lot of liquidity there, but um, we're gonna go for this one anyways. Delta about a fifteen percent chance, and uh, maybe we could let's see if we could get filled for. Hmm. Maybe we could try for 26. So click this. I see sell, negative one. The mid is 23. It's not unreasonable to bump it up here. I'm gonna put this good till canceled. I'm gonna keep it at limit. And um, switching this over here into a uh, long stock because that's how I I, did, I have this set up. I like I like. Uh, having things organized like that whether you do or don't it's totally up to you this is just giving us an idea of, of what's going on right it's showing this um, right because now look at max loss infinite right it's showing naked naked call option uh, selling a naked call so the computer doesn't know that what we're gonna do is dig into these cash reserves and cover and adjust if needed so when would we adjust well first of all if we don't get filled, we don't have to adjust, right? We got to get filled first. So this guy, this has some time, right? 30, 32 days, right? Maybe we get filled this week, maybe not. I don't know, we'll see. But let's look back here at this chart. And if, um, I think there's a chance we might be able to get filled this week. And uh, I'll say, I'll say maybe if, uh, if the stock starts trading up in this up in this range up in here, I'll buy a hundred shares to to cover. Okay, if it starts trading up in there. So uh, maybe maybe sixty-eight or sixty-nine bucks, somewhere in there. We'll see. We'll see how, how that goes. Uh I it's always kind of a case by case, right? But that's um yeah, it is. It is always case by case for me. It's never like a mechanical trade. Uh, uh, there's one mechanical trade that I do from um, that I, I paid for. I mean, I paid to learn a lot of different things, but there's one that I continue continue to do that uh, that uh, just the mechanical trade and and it works pretty well. And what I mean by mechanical is you're just kind of looking at delta. You're looking at um, looking at the buying power effect and you're 
just making adjustments based on that, how much premium is coming in, how many days to expiration. And there's not too much like chart reading with it, even though I'm basically by by nature now I'm, I'm a chart reader. So I'll, I'll, I'll do the chart reading with that. But the way that um, kind of the way that I've been trading besides when I when someone else teaches me a trade, if it's a mechanical trade, the way that I've been trading is not really mechanical. I gear towards more, more towards um, uh, protecting the downside. You know, like whether or not people really do this, you know, everyone can quote Warren Buffett saying rule number one, don't lose money. Rule number two, uh, uh, remember rule number one. So I kind of have my trading set up like that, where in this scenario right here, it's very difficult for me to lose money. And I do that and I, I understand that I'm limiting my profits in order to uh, also limit my exposure to risk or my limit my downside. And for me, that's okay because I do other things selectively, it's very strategically that are taking maybe more risk and have more potential upside. But for the most part, stuff like this, I just do it um, day in, day out. It, it doesn't, for me, uh, in my real account, when I'm, when I'm um, shorting strangles, and, and doing this conversion from uh, naked calls to to uh, covered calls. If I'm living my normal life, uh, I can do this without much brain power because I've just been doing it a long time and it, it's just kind of become habitual for me. And I stick with the same few stocks. Because I stick with the fa same few stocks, I'm really aware of, of the ebb and flow uh, of their personality and and um, those type of things. So it makes it pretty easy for me to realize when I need to, when I need to cover. So that is it in a nutshell. And uh, obviously there's more to it, but this would give you the quick down and dirty. And I, I'll be a hundred percent honest with you. If you are not proficient at just selling a cash secured put option on a stock that you're happy to own, don't try shorting strangles. Go take it. It's okay to take it baby steps. From what I've seen, you know, I, I haven't been trading as long as some people, but I've been trading longer than some others. And one of my, one of the things that has have allowed me to have longevity past, past the point where I, there were some people that were trading before I started trading. They're not trading anymore. There was someone that showed me some stuff. This guy that I used to know, I still know him. And when I, when I see him, he's not trading anymore. He's totally out of the game. So one of the ways that I've been able to stay in the game a long time is that um, I learn the basics first. I learn the basic, then I add another one. And that, um, in the very beginning, I don't know if that was told to me that way, uh, but I think it's from just kind of understanding trying to understand this is step one, this is step two. Hey, if you, can, if you can't do step number, if you can't do step number one, how can you expect to do step number three type of thing? Or if you can't do, if it's like a, a you know, levels of difficulty, this is the, the least difficult. If you can't do this, how can you expect to do something on like a four level difficulty, right? So learn how to get, get proficient at doing something that's on the easier side, then add something a little more complex. So maybe at first you, you're just selling cash secured put options. And then if you get a sign, sell a covered call option. And then if you, if you get it called away, then go back to selling cash secured put options. And then add a level, you know, add a level, add a level. And also keep in mind when you're adding these different levels, let's say if you're going to go on vacation or there's going to be some reason why you can't focus as much into the stock market then it would be it might be a good idea to 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 reduce the complexity of your strategies while that's going on so for example i wouldn't be doing this if i was if i was uh taking a flight i had to i, I went to uh, arizona and florida uh, earlier this week i mean or earlier this year which i hardly ever take take trips off oahu but i i did in this case and they were about a week each a week and you know to go to florida it was like it was like 24 hour travel time so I wasn't doing stuff like this. I just kept it real, real simple. Selling cash secure put options, selling covered calls. That's it. And then when I got back, I was going to leave like in two weeks later. So I just kept it simple. I just, that's it. Just kept it simple because I knew 
while I'm sitting in a uh, airport or with jet lag and all this, these things and don't have access to the normal uh, desktop big screen computer I'm normally looking at, I'm not going to be able to really trade uh, the same. Now, if you're thinking, well, you should have better skill than this. Blah, blah, blah. You know what? Look in the mirror and tell yourself that. Right. That's kind of like telling me that I, I should have uh, I should like vanilla over chocolate or whatever. No, you, you do you. You do you Res respect other human beings. That's and that's what I'm uh, attempting to uh, impart to you is that you got to kind of figure out where you are. Don't be listening when you when you listen to other people, listen to them, but realize they're not you. And you're going to have to find develop a system that really works well with your personality and your lifestyle. And again, I suggest starting with something basic, learning the basics, and then start moving up. Because there's no way you can do complex, if you cannot manage a, a simple trade, there's no way you're going to be able to manage a complex trade under a lot of stress. I guess the Navy SEALs say you don't rise to the occasion, you sink to your lowest point of preparation. And when stress comes out, our, our, where we are in far as far as preparation is always revealed. So uh, keep that in mind and do whatever you need to do. Hey, and at the end of the day, do whatever you want. Like, I, <laughs> if you if you don't want to do it, don't do it. I don't, I, I don't care whether you, whether you pay your bills or not, whether you whether you become a billionaire or not. None of that stuff is relevant to my life, to be honest with you. <laughs> And whether I can buy food or not has nothing to do with your bills. So, uh, and, and vice versa, right? So you do you. I'm attempting to give you some information that might help you out a little bit. I hope it helps some people. But ultimately, my uh, uh, one of my first pieces of advice, one of my final pe pieces of advice is going to be learn to figure this stuff out for yourself so you do not have to rely on the suspect opinion of other people, right? No one cares about your money as much as you do. So, so do what you need to do. You guys have a fantastic day. Aloha.